Hello children, I hope you've had a fabulous day. Are you ready to find out what happens next in the story of Guinea Pig Superstar? Do you remember we left it yesterday where Harry Stevenson had just come face to face with Flash the Corn Snake? Harry Stevenson ran like the clappers. It was the way of the guinea pig. He didn't even have to think about it. His little legs just worked by themselves. As Harry scurried hither and thither across the classroom, Flash slithered close behind. The snake could move fast, so Harry had to be clever. He jumped from school bag to school bag, hoping to confuse his foe. But Flash wasn't fooled. Just like Fergus said, he was super clever. Harry couldn't shake him off. Harry decided that the only way to outpace Flash was to get off the floor and find somewhere safe. He wasn't sure if corn snakes could climb, but it was worth a try. The tables and chairs were too high for a little creature like Harry to jump onto in one go, so he needed a launch pad. Looking urgently ahead, Harry spotted a line of school bags at the side of the classroom. If he could clamber on top of them, he could jump onto a chair and from there onto a table. He raced towards the school bags and scampered up the side of the smallest one. Then he clambered up each bag until he'd reached the toilets. But Flash was still following. Harry took a deep breath, closed his eyes and flung himself from the tallest bag in a great big squeaky leap. Weak, he cried. He landed on a chair with a bump and looked back. Flash seemed confused, weaving his head to and fro, his tongue flicking in the air. Perhaps he couldn't jump. But the snake simply slithered back down the bags, across the floor, and over to Harry's chair. Weak, weaked Harry again, making another jump from the chair to the table. Surely I'm safe, I'm safe here, he thought. But no. Flash had climbed up onto the table too. Harry sped round it, pursued by Flash, with both guinea pig and snake knocking over paint pots and jam jars filled with water as they went. Things got very slippery for the pair of them. And at one point, Harry slid and fell. This is it, he thought in panic, his feet scrabbling in blue paint. But Flash was skidding around too, so Harry had time to get up and flee. But there was nowhere to run. Flash had Harry cornered by the edge of the table. Here I go again, thought Harry Stevenson, taking another huge leap and aiming for the next table. Weak, he yelled, zooming through the air and making a very bumpy landing. His feet were still slippery with paint and the force of Harry's jump made him skid across the table straight onto a mixing palette of red and yellow paint. Whoosh! The palette whizzed across the table and off the other side. Harry rode the palette like a snowboard as it flew gracefully through the air then landed on the floor. It continued to slide across the classroom leaving a trail of colour in its wake. Crash! The palette hit a wall and splattered more paint everywhere. Covered in red and yellow paint, Harry flew into the air and landed splat on top of the pile of canvases. Oof! He rolled over and over before scrabbling to his feet and staggering around in a daze. Oh dear. As Harry looked up, he spotted two things. Neither was a sight to make him feel happy. The first was Flash shooting at high speed across the classroom after losing control on the slippery tabletops. The snake had no feet to act as brakes, so just like Harry's mixing palette, he hurtled across the tables, getting faster and faster as he went, then rocketed into the air. The hapless snake flew slap into the side of an easel with an almighty smack. Ouch, whipped Harry Stevenson as Flash fell to the floor. That must have really hurt. The snail ache winded for a few seconds and then slowly, wearily and wonkily slunk off to hide in his box. It's hard to spot emotion in the face of a snake, but Car Harry could have sworn that Flash looked embarrassed. The second sight was even worse. There in the doorway stood an appalled Miss Gibby and her class, staring open-mouthed at the classroom. A classroom that Harry looked, realised as he looked around in horror had been turned into a scene of complete devastation. There were upturned chairs all over the place, great puddles of water on the floor and splashes of paint dripping down the walls. 
It was as if a gang of rainbows had had a massive fight in 3G's classroom. Harry looked down at his paws and saw that he too was multicoloured. He was no longer ginger, but a stripy, splodgy, technicolour rodent. And that wasn't all. A sudden creaking sound made everyone turn towards the easel that Flash had crashed, crashed into. It had been rocking back and forth from the force of the blow, and now, ever so gently, it started to tip over. Please no, thought Harry Stevenson, as he watched the easel fall slowly onto the next in line. The second easel wobbled a bit, and then it too toppled over, knocking into the one beside it, and like a line of dominoes, Every single easel sent its neighbour crashing noisily to the floor. Bang! Smash! Oh, goodness me. When the dust settled, Harry peered up at Miss Gibby from his puddle of paint. Someone else was there too. Mrs Edwards, the head. Harry gulped. From the look on everyone's faces, he knew that this was very, very bad. Ooh. Let's wait until tomorrow to find out what happens. Will Harry get into serious trouble for wrecking the classroom, even though it wasn't really his fault? Let's see. Have a great night, year two. See you tomorrow. Bye. <laughs>